Hello, this is Ray Motor from ACG, and welcome to this edition of The Hot Seat. Joining me today is Sumi from Cisco. Sumi, thanks for joining The Hot Seat. Absolutely, Ray. Pleasure. Pleasure and to be I here. And I think this is also your first time, right? That's right. It's the first time. Excellent, excellent. Well, welcome. I'm feeling hot. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, this is what The Hot Seat's about, right? Now, it's interesting. Being a, a routing guy myself, there's been a lot of discussion on segment routing, right? And, and I'm excited to see that there's actually a lot of progress being made from a deployment perspective. But I do see out there that there's some different definitions out there. Why don't we start off the hot seat by getting a short description on what your definition is of segment routing. Sure, absolutely. So with segment routing, applications mm -hmm. get to choose the best path in the network, right. whatever their requirements are. Right. So that's like the simple definition. Uh -huh. Now just to elaborate a bit, right. uh, what segment routing does is it leverages the distributed intelligence of the network mm -hmm. as well as centralized opti optimization of algorithms right. to, to enable applications to get what they want. Yeah, excellent. I think that's something that's always needed, right, from that point of view. Now, if, if you look at it from a service provider perspective, right, what challenges does segment routing solve for them? Absolutely. So I think, uh, if uh, you know, we all talk about SP challenges that's right. in the form of flat revenues, exploding bandwidth, Mm -hmm. So the way I look at it is uh, there is a need for uh, essentially efficiency with respect to the bandwidth. So, mm -hmm. you know, cost savings or simplification, mm -hmm. right? So exploding bandwidth solved by simplification. Right. Flat revenues requires new differentiated services to create new revenue. Right. Now, what's happening is a lot of things are coming into the network, mm -hmm. right? And these are also uh, implying that a lot of new applications are using the network. Right, right. And these applications have requirements, like uh, latency requirements. Mm -hmm. Some may require more resiliency. Mm -hmm. Some may require the lowest cost path. Right. So there are different requirements for these applications. Yeah. Now, what SPs have to do is deliver the path or the network performance based on these applications. Mm -hmm. Now, traditionally, we have thought of solving this with what is called traffic engineering, mm -hmm. but the traffic engineering as it stands today, it's difficult to implement. Right. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's not easy to scale it, right. and it's very complex to operate. So, you know, if you, if you look around the world, you can literally count on your hands mm -hmm. the number of SPs or cloud providers that have actually turned on <laughs> traffic engineering. Right, yeah. And even if they turned it on, they turned it on, on in the core of the right. network, so not end-to-end. -end. Right. So what SPs need is the ability to offer what I call as traffic engineering for the masses. Okay. So if you can do it end to end mm -hmm. and it's simple and it's scalable, mm -hmm. then they can offer differentiated services for those applications. Right. And you cannot do it uh, if it's going to be too complicated. So it has to yet support simplification right. so that they can solve both problems, increase their revenue and uh, take care of their costs as bandwidth rises. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I mean, because always like when we look at things like MPLS, right, there's there's a lot of flexibility and capability, but the simplification is the part that was uh, missing and segment routing is addressing that piece. So you kind of touched on the benefits a little bit, right? But are there any more benefits uh, oh, yeah. segment routing that you see there? Oh, yeah. I think, um, you know, for, I, I would say that uh, simplification, so right. we talked yep, about yep. that, so right. definitely... Uh, because segment routing doesn't have any signaling, mm -hmm. it simplifies, right? right? It doesn't, uh, it's, it, and that also means that it scales. So right. simplification, scalability, mm -hmm. uh, clearly resiliency. So right. uh, aspects such as, uh, you know, restoring any failure within less than 50 milliseconds. 50, right. uh, segment routing uh, traffic engineering enables that. Right. And uh, it's optimized. So if you look at the hyperscale providers, they right. would talk about, being able to use their transport links more than 80%. Right. And the reason they are able to do it is because of traffic engineering. Right. So yeah. clearly SR segment routing enables that optimization. Right. And I think it's innovation. So yeah. mm -hmm. uh, innovative uh, in the sense uh, for SPs, uh, you know, being able to offer low latency services mm -hmm. or being able to offer uh, a service where the primary and the backup path are totally disjoint. Right. So these are new value added services mm -hmm. that make new money 
right. or SPs yeah. that you can do with uh, Segment yeah, You know, times have changed. I remember when I was a CTO, I used to get nervous if my pipes used to get to 45% <laughs> utilization, right? Okay. And then switch it over yeah, after yeah, that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so it's good to hear now. Regarding segment routing, the nice thing I think that's uh, really nice about it is about the progress that it made. I mean, I'm actually excited about the adoption that it's had. It's been pretty impressive. I mean, we have some really big names that have deployed this and stuff. I mean, could you address a little bit about what some of those use cases are for those customers and stuff? Absolutely. Yeah. So we are very excited yeah. about uh, the traction that we are having. Uh -huh. I see uh, a lot of uh, network architects you okay. know, excited. Uh, across our SP customer base, our, right. across our community, you know, evaluating and actually implementing segment routing. Right. Um, and mostly what, I, what we see is, uh, we've seen adoption across cloud scale, across uh, SPs, mm -hmm. as well as across large enterprises. Right. And uh, you know, I'll give you an example of Vodafone Germany, mm -hmm. right? They have uh, implemented segment routing okay. since uh, 2016. Okay. And some of the num uh, performance improvements they've achieved are impressive. Uh, uh, you know, they've reduced uh, tunnels in the network, backup tunnels in the network by 19,000. Wow. Right? wow. Yet their resiliency is up. Yes. Uh, they have improved latency by 50%. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's amazing that's scale. Yeah. That's, that's impressive. And, uh, you know, their configurations, when you configure uh, traffic engineering, you configure all the fast reload, it, it is bulky. It is, right. It's not easy. Yeah. And that has reduced by 80%. So mm -hmm. clearly, simplification, scale, and uh, better uh, better resiliency are the drivers for right. uh, right. Vodafone. Yeah. Uh, Bell Canada, uh -huh. uh, they have uh, created, uh, uh, they've transformed their central office mm -hmm. into uh, data centric design. Okay. Data right. And they have extended segment routing from core all the way into the central office. Excellent. So it becomes more end to end. Right. And that gives them a unified forwarding plane, uh -huh. which essentially means uh, that you are uh, you're able to simplify. Mm -hmm. So again, simplification is a big driver there. Right. And then I think on the large enterprises, the one I would highlight is Walmart. Again, okay. the driver is similar. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's simplification. That's right. Yeah. So we see uh, we see a lot more traction, but those are just a few examples. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good to see that. It's gone from the PowerPoints to the standards to actual deployments Absolutely. there, you know. Maybe we can close with is, what do you see coming next? I mean. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, as I said, uh, we are uh, very enthusiastic about mm -hmm. this technology. And, uh, you know, one thing that is on the horizon for us is 5G, yeah, right? 5G. But before I go to 5G, I think uh, just recounting some of uh, what is happening, you know, we've seen traffic rise, I think, 127 times is what mm -hmm. I yes. read from yeah. 2005 to 2021. And right. then we are going to have 27 billion things on the network <laughs> uh, by 2021. Right. So clearly more and more applications are coming onto the network and SPs are investing in 5G. So the big question is, how are we going to return, get a return on That's that right. investment? Yeah. And I really uh, believe that segment routing offers uh, service providers that way to uh, make uh, new revenue through Excellent. these uh, differentiated services. So, yeah. uh, so what we are working on is we've delivered a lot of the capabilities of segment routing with an MPLS network in okay. mind. Yeah. But it has also been designed uh, with native V6, IPv6 networking. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So the next uh, wave of segment routing innovation is going to be around what we call as SRV6. Right. Okay. And in, in this wave, you get all the benefits of segment routing MPLS, mm -hmm. uh, such as resiliency uh -huh. and the 50 millisecond restoration, right. the ability to specify a path, uh, source routing, all those things, you get mm -hmm. that. So you are definitely able to not just move a packet from A to B mm -hmm. along a, def uh, you know, a, a defined path, mm -hmm. uh, having both distributed intelligence and optimization from a central controller. Right. But what else you are able to do is you're also able to specify what to do with the packet. So not okay. just where to send it and how to send it, mm -hmm. but what to do with it. Right. So we call this as network programming. Okay. And just to give you an example, so you could actually say that, hey, for this packet on a, on a per flow basis, mm -hmm. uh, this needs to go to a firewall. Okay. Uh, this needs to go to an encoder of a particular type because that's how it has to be rendered at right. the end point. Right. Yeah. So why is this so exciting? Because it improves and massively changes the relevance of the network mm -hmm. to the application that is using it. Right. And the more that connection, instead of it just being, hey, the network will just deliver from point A to B, but more than that, network is going to deliver it optimally 
with a great experience and it's going to also do some things for me. Yeah, yeah. It allows SPs to now offer those differentiated services we talked about. So in the 5G context, yeah. think of all the investment into the RAN, into mm -hmm. new radios, but now think of network slices right. delivered through segment routing, V6. Yeah. And each slice could be, this is a slice for an encrypted enterprise service. Okay. Yeah. This is a slice for low latency. So we're very excited yeah, yeah, about yeah. where it's, it's going. Almost, yeah, that's good to hear. I mean, so it's good to see that there's real customers and there's a good future behind it. Well, you're officially off the hot seat. <laughs> Thank you. It wasn't too bad, right? Not at all, not at all. With Sumi, this is Ray Moda. Thanks for joining this edition of the Hot Seat.